Welcome back everybody to Forza Motorsport. So we're, today we're starting off the Exotic Speed Championship. So because this is six races, we're going to do two races per episode. So this will be a free parter. So yeah, let's uh, see the kind of cars we're going to be getting in. And uh, yeah, where we're going to be racing first. Three loads. Come on, there we go. The term supercar was coined for the rarest automotive species. Prestigious exotics built in limited production runs by manufacturers with legendary racing pedigrees. Their sole purpose was to realize the pinnacle of extreme speed. Now they're about to be built into something even more ferocious, then piloted by drivers who understand that a car with this wild a potential can never be tamed, only respected. Right, so yeah. Obviously, supercars now are a lot more common than they ever used to be, uh, especially in like the 80s and 90s. But yeah, now obviously we have numerous of them from numerous manufacturers. So firstly, we have the Aston Martin V8 Vantage V600, absolutely superb car, and yeah, as you can see, 600 horsepower and 600 pounds-feet of torque with its 5.3-liter positive displacement supercharger V8 engine does weigh a hell of a lot though as you can see at 4,414 pounds as um, Jeremy Clarkson called this back in the 90s it's basically a Rolls Royce with attitude and uh, yeah that is basically what that is because it's as well this is as luxurious as a Rolls Royce but obviously it's far quicker than any Rolls Royce from that time or even quite frankly now would be as you can see by the acceleration and the speed but yeah the handling and braking does take a hit because of all of that weight then we've got the Ferrari 512 Testarossa. It's got worse braking than the Aston, but that's probably because the Aston had massive brakes to make up for this huge amount of weight. But as you can see, the handling is a lot better. Uh, although the acceleration and the top speed aren't apparently as good, despite it having a fair decent amount of power. But again, it's not a lightweight by any means. It's nearly 3,700 pounds, and yet it's only got a 421 horsepower, 4.9 litre flat 12 engine. So. Yeah, it only weighs about 700 pounds less than the um, Aston Martin, and yet it's dealing with, what, 179 horsepower less, and 240 pounds feet of torque less, so I'd say that 700 pounds isn't really wasted on the, uh, the Vantage there. And then we've got the Honda NSXR, which was basically meant to be a more user-friendly Ferrari, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive. But as you can see, nowhere near the kind of power as a Ferrari, but also a lot less in the way of weight. As you can see, nearly a thousand pounds less, which certainly does make a difference when it comes to its handling. Um, although the handling on the Ferrari is a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, the acceleration is just as good just because of the uh, lack of weight. Then we've got the Lamborghini Countach LP5000 QV, the ultimate version of the Countach. But that's like saying it's the ultimate version of a movie poster because that's basically what this car was. It is a moving poster. It's not a very good car at all. I know the handling says otherwise and so does the acceleration for that matter in terms of other cars but yeah outside of being able to go in a straight line it's not a particularly brilliant car to drive and yeah that comes from being on the track or on the road quite frankly so yeah. Then we've got the Lotus Esprit V8 probably my second favourite car here um, it's got really good acceleration, handling and braking, and a solid top speed. And yeah, a really rather nice 3.5 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine, producing a healthy 350 horsepower. And as you can see, it's only barely heavier than the Honda, but we've got obviously got 74 extra horsepower and a good chunk of extra torque as well. So yeah, that's definitely the better all rounder out of all of them so far. Then we've got the Porsche 968 Turbo S, which yeah, it's a pretty decent all-round car, as you can see, handling and uh, braking isn't massively far off the Lotus. It is acceleration, to be honest. Top speed is by a fair bit, but this is quite unique in the fact it's got an extremely large inline-4 engine at 3 litres. Usually inline-4 engines top out about 2.4 litres, 2.5. It's very rare that you get anything as high as a 3 litre inline-4 turbocharged engine, so yeah, that's really rather unique in that regard. And because it's quite a large cubic uh, displacement and it's also got a turbocharger, it's got a huge amount of torque compared to its horsepower. 369 pounds feet of torque uh, compared to its 305 horsepower, which is a really big amount of torque. It's even more than the um, Lotus there. And it's as much as the Lamborghini of all things. And that's got a V12. 
Uh, obviously it's more than the Honda, it's more than the Ferrari, uh, it's not quite as much as the Aston Martin, but yeah, that is a really healthy amount of torque out of that car, and uh, yeah, this engine is obviously really rather quite unique, so yeah. Now, I'm torn between the Aston Martin and the Lotus being cars that are arguably my two favourites here, but then there's also cars here that I haven't really particularly driven all that much on this game or previous Forza games, like the Ferrari, the Honda, and the Porsche. I'm tempted by the Porsche just because it's weird. You know, it's got a weird engine, it's not something you'd normally see. You certainly wouldn't see an engine that large out of an inline four these days. Two litres is usually the maximum nowadays. Um, doesn't weigh all that much either. Barely is barely heavier than the uh, Lotus, and yet it's not a million miles off. Uh, yeah, alright, we'll go for the Porsche. I've driven the Lotus plenty of times, you know, I've driven the Lotus in, you know, racing online videos. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've reviewed the Aston Martin and done videos with that car before. Um, I'm not sure what colour looks best, it doesn't help that it shoves the camera around. Uh, I think blue will look cool. Uh, blue, yeah, we'll go for blue. don't think we've had a blue car before in this any of these championships so far so um, yeah so first race is going to be at Daytona International Speedway for five laps so should be a pretty interesting race as per usual though we do not upgrade the car in the first race just so we can see what the car is able to do on its own and you know areas that we can improve it upon by upgrading it obviously this car is going to have some areas that are going to be lax during the just last because you know the it is a 30 year old car now car and um, yeah technologies have moved on quite a bit and so as you know the kind of speeds cars can do so but I always look at cars like this in the context of when they were released so sure it probably wasn't the best kind of car of its type from the uh, from the era but neither do I do doubt that it I expect it to be the worst from that period either but as far as Porsches go from that period, it doesn't seem to be particularly well reserved. You know, if people look at any cars from the 80s and 90s when it comes to Porsche, it's usually something like a 928 or a 944 or the current era of the 911. Whereas this, yeah, doesn't seem to have been as uh, appreciated. It's probably because it does have a bit of a weird engine. In some regards, look like a 928 as well. So, but I've always liked this kind of design. Like the Porsche we're going with, with this and the 928. So, I have no issues with the way this looks. Oh dear. Completely lost it there. Gained a fair few amount of places. There we go. That's better. Slight. A uh, little bit of rubbing with the paint there, but. It's nothing intentional. It's just you know, the typical chaos that exu uh, uh, goes around in the first lap, but regardless, that chaos has resulted in us getting third place. But as you can see, we are up against some quite powerful cars up front. But we're a lot lighter than the Aston Martin is. 1600 pounds or so. Basically, another car in some places of the world. And yeah, that means that we are going to be a bit more nimble. But there is a lot of um, parts of this course that are, or uh, well, this track, that are, you know, very speed orientated. I hope you can actually hear me. Um, I did have some audio issues in the last episode, or at least there seemed to be some. I'm just going to knock it down a little bit more just in case and then if it's too low then the worst is that you can't hear the engine all that much but at least you can hear me. Well, that depends on your what you prefer to hear the engine or me. Um, but yeah. But regardless yeah this is a pretty cool car and one that is quite clearly a little bit underappreciated. I don't see many people racing these online. Um, certainly don't see many people talk about them when it comes to, you know, 90s Porsches, but as you can see it's quite capable in a straight line. The engine does 
does pack a bit of a punch in terms of torque, especially when coming out of corners. And as you can see, in terms of its top speed, it's no slouch either. ground there just because we came into a corner and we weren't on the straight anymore. Although no doubt that that Aston Martin was getting well above 160 as we were not quite doing that. Really good pull out the corners but then so will the Aston Martin because it has even more torque than we do. But we are at the end of the day have less weight to haul around so that torque is a little bit more effective I guess you could say. Quite sure that we're going to have the. Uh, it's going to be a massive enough amount of difference between handling and between us and the Aston Martins and to offset the fact that they are much quicker on a straight line, or at least on the uh, speedier parts. So, so power is likely to be the one thing we're going to have to upgrade. I don't know if we have all that much to play with, given that we're in B class only. I think. It's not like this car is slow, you know, other sports cars from the period might well be slower than this. Comparison to the Aston Martin there, and the one in front of that, we are a little bit outclassed. You know, nearly twice the horsepower. And well over 200 extra pounds feet of torque, which is hard to argue with even with the extra weight. We do have plenty of time uh, to catch up, we have another few laps after this one. Three laps. As you can see they have to break a lot late, earlier than we are. It's not because probably the braking technology in this car is any better, it's just because we have less weight and therefore less momentum. Slightly less in the way of torque, but it does have more power than the extra horsepower. So, yeah, and again, even though that does weigh more, I don't think a, you know, a few hundred pounds here or there is it's going to be too troubled by a bit extra. Um, not going to trouble an extra hundred horsepower or more. So, as you can see, we definitely do keep up with them in the corners. not bad enough to make up for the fact that we can't keep it on the strings. Imagine we'll do better on the 
less speed orientated circuit. this podium that'll be a decent start to this championship. You know, I'm not exactly out of the top five or anything like that. And at least we know one area where we're gonna need to improve and that is gonna be more power. Handling and braking this is fairly decent. Granted it would probably need a solid rate in that those departments given given obviously you know you increase your power and your torque you, you're also going to be pushing the other components to their limits oh dear the Aston Martin just flicked over there well at least we get second place now hope that wasn't because of my rewind but you know I did go off the track myself and I didn't want to be getting a penalty or anything because that would harm our chances even more about that Aston Martin, you can probably count on one hand the cars that had more power than that at that time. Uh, there's only I think, two that I can think of that had more power than that. Um, McLaren F1, but even then that was only a fraction more power, 20 odd horsepower or something like that. And the Bugatti EB110, I think that had more. many cars had 600 or more horsepower. So yeah, that Aston Martin certainly was one of a, a few. And at the end of the day, I think that car was at least a bit more produced than the uh, McLaren F1 ever was. Not that I've ever seen either in real life, because they are still at the end of the day super, super rare. Because of their rarity, they are expensive and being expensive means that people are unlikely to drive them around on a daily basis but the fact is that Aston Martin is a car you could comfortably use on a daily basis in comparison to the F1. Aston Martin's got a sizable boot, it's got you know, plenty of luxury on the inside. It just so happens to have a 600 horsepower engine in it. See, has massively caught us up. Despite him having a uh, bit of a sizable off. We're going to be able to hold him off all the uh, end of this. Yes, just about. That's extremely close. Good work, Jim. Yeah, less than 0.2 of a second in it. Oh, yeah. Quite a. Um, formidable car that my Aston Martin is and yeah as you can see the one in front had a much better lap time than us purely because it's just quicker than us on the straights same with the one behind us and the same with the Ferrari and the other Aston Martin behind that so yeah we clearly were outmatched in terms of power but thankfully the handling and the braking um, somewhat made up for that so yeah we've got 25 points to start this championship off with which isn't awful but you know we have obviously been in better, better positions than that. And, uh, yeah, we um, inevitably uh, are going to have to upgrade the power in some regard. Right, so let's continue. Right, performance. Oh, the limit is A class. Oh, cool. Right, so we can do actually quite a bit with this. 
Oh yeah, this is is this a new thing that we can do on this game now? Put restrictor plates on. I have not seen that unless it's an upgrade that I've never got to because of the uh, woeful upgrade system. But I've never seen that before. But that's cool if you wanted to, you know, downgrade a car and get it into a lower class. It's really cool. And um, yeah, I feel like putting on a big old race supercharger. Increase the airflow to the car a little bit with that turbocharger. So I've got 385. What displacement can we get this inline four into? 3.4 litre inline four. Jeez. We're getting into the little kind of territory that you'd see from American cars from like the 60s or 70s when they try to be uh, economical uh, cars and yet they'd have uh, like an inline six at like 4.2 litres or something like that. And it's just, just crazy. Um, but we'll keep it at 3.2. Uh, nice round 400 there to play with. Right, brakes. Get those in. Weight reduction. Obviously we are still quite a lightweight car but we can stand to lose a little bit more so I'm going to help our um, acceleration at the end of the day we'll slightly lower the car in terms of suspension we'll widen the tyres at the back and the front give it a better tyre compound we'll transmission, will that help? Yep, race transmission, race drive line. Give it a new clutch to deal with that extra power. What bumpers can we give it? It's just race ones, I think. Yeah. Well, we can give it. I don't know why the hood is not letting us look at it properly, but we'll just get that to lighten it a little bit more. Rear wing, well, we've already got one. Um, so I don't think we need that. Right, what else can we do? Flywheel. It lets it rev a little harder and faster. Yeah, we can't do that amount of power anymore. Um, I think we're good in that regard. We don't have to obviously upgrade it compl uh, you know, entirely. You know, there is a thing of too much power and too much speed and whatnot. I guess we can go race tire compound here. Yeah. Put us within a um, warm PI and then we'll just do the front roll bars. If put us up another PI. I hate being one off. <laughs> it's really annoying. Um guess if we put up that and then just take out a couple of lesser kind of upgrades. And it's going to make us one off again. Oh. I know. Flywheel. There we go. Put those back on, yeah. Yeah, right, that's good. Only costs you 47,250 credits or if you were to grind this game into the middle of next week it would uh, cost you 5,250 CP so yeah there's no competition really in terms of wanting to um, avoid you know grinding for CP it's just no competition at all so uh, yeah let's get on to Spa see how we do here 
hopefully we can um, win this one. And again, though, this Before has quite Sir, long straights at times, which again the Aston Martin could take advantage of. But we do now have more firepower. But even though we have upgraded the engine quite a lot, 95 extra horsepower, that is still 200 horsepower off the Aston Martin. Which just shows how much power that car really has. Right, so let's see if we can do any better. Hopefully we can. There is at the end of the day more parts of this track that are handling orientated than there was with Daytona. Daytona, even though there is obviously a fair few corners, it's still, it's still very fast corners. Uh, there's very few slow ones. Whereas here we start off with a fairly slow one and then it's a bit of a rouge to go through, which is quite quick, but... A lot more nimble. Feel the difference on automatically. And the AI are not particularly great at dealing with their rouge, they always break. Kind of have to take some avoiding action there. definitely a lot more nimble. Not that it was, you know, a tank or anything like that to start with, but you can definitely feel those tyres working well with the suspension. The slight reduction in weight. And you've got all of that torque from that massive turbocharger that comes on. As soon as you get out of the corner. Flying through the gears with that race transmission, which is helpful. I think the original transmission would have been particularly thankful for the extra power, in particular the extra torque. have to be very, very careful with the track limits on this course, it's very easy to um, step out of line by accident. You might not intentionally do it, but you most likely will do it if you're not paying attention. It's obviously no bother on single player if you've got rewinds enabled, but on multiplayer I've seen it happen numerous times with people that I've been competing against, and um, yeah, it's put on several seconds at times on their um, overall time, race time, which has knocked them back several places. I've seen people that have gone first place and purely because they've gone wide on some of the corners on this track, they've knocked down to fourth or fifth, so something you've got to be very wary of. Obviously you can put on the um, track limit indicators if you so wish. I think they're like a little ribbon or something. Pretty sure we had them on the previous Forza game. But they are helpful if you are learning these kind of tracks for the first time. Or if you just want to be reminded of the track limits. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, accessibility options on this game, which is always nice to see. There's no reason not to have them on, and if you never use them, then that's no bother. It's not like you're paying extra for them. But they are handy for those that do need them and ultimately just makes it more accessible to more people. And there's no 
problems with that whatsoever. It annoys me when people try to gatekeep games uh, just because some people aren't, you know, as able-bodied as they are. One thing that you shouldn't be paying extra for though for this game is the car pass, which came to a it's a um, conclusion last week, and yeah, it has been probably the worst car pass we've had on a Forza game, uh, including the Horizon games and that, because the Forza Horizon 5 car pass, although it did have some issues, was miles better just because it was more varied. Uh, a car pass should be varied, you know, you've got 32 cars to choose from, or to put in. Why would you concentrate pretty much like 29, 30 of them solely on racing cars? And apparently, according to those who know racing cars, are uh, not even ones that are necessarily able to compete against one another or because of how old they are or they're not in the same league or regulation. Or make the uh, same regulations or anything like that. So, yeah, it just seems. hundred pictures of cars on a wall and they're just from darts at the wall and just pick what never dart hit which so uh, yeah massive disappointment I recommend only wait, waiting until the car pass is broken up into single individual cars to purchase singularly if you're not particularly interested in most of the cars that is I personally would have chosen I think only the BMW, the Toyota and the Audi maybe, but even then that's a bit of a stretch given, you know, it's not the best Audi ever and it's neither the, uh, it's neither the ultimate, uh, I say not the ultimate version of the Audi GT, but you know, it's not the last version that they ever did which was a special version. Years before that, it doesn't mean it's a bad car or anything, you know, it's nearly 400 horsepower, all wheel drive, and it looks good and it drives really nicely. But I think if they were going to put a new Audi TT on, they should put the uh, special version that I've heard of. I might be misremembering about that special version, but I seem to remember reading about it somewhere. This can just celebrate the end of the Audi TT and yeah, how do you don't do sports cars really anymore? Do sports saloons and sports estates, but sports cars? Nope. No supercars, because obviously yeah, the R8 has been ditched as well. Yeah, this car's performing well. Probably got a little bit too much power, because it does seem like the rear end is wanting to step out. I've put new tyres on it, lowered the suspension. Um, the rear end is basically the same, there's not very much you can change about cars in this game. In terms of its genuine fundamentals, you can add things to the cars and take things away, but you can very rarely change, you know, the way certain elements work. Although obviously there is tuning that you could go into if you so wish, but I think even that has its limitations. But I'm generally fine with the upgrade system when it's, you know, you're paying for it with credits, that is. One more. Finish strong. I just wish they'd fundamentally change the way that, you know, and it's something I've talked about a million times before but just give us car options lists for certain cars take in any any Audi most Audis these days can be saloon or estate and diesel or petrol and yeah it just would be, would be nice to be able to choose such an array of op from such an array of options because then you could literally have a car that is unique compared to most other people.
because even if they have the same options on the same car as you do, your upgrades will probably be different. You know, the way you've visually done the car may well be different. I just think adding that kind of variety would just be really, really cool. And it would give us versions of cars that we've perhaps not never had before, even though we've know that had a version of the car in another way. Like we've had the Audi RS6, I think it is, with the V10 engine from the Audi R8 in plenty of car, uh, games on Forza, but we've only ever had the saloon version, and I'd love the estate version of that. It was uh, infamously raced on Top Gear against a bunch of skiers. Um, oh, that's a truck violation. Um, to have those kind of options, you know, it's been several decades since the Ford Mustang revolutionised the kind of, kind of car options list kind of thing, and it feels like that would be a perfect fit for a game. Because there's loads of cars out there that you can have various different body styles to. Maybe it would be a better fit for Forza Horizon than for the motorsport. But regardless, I'd like to see that kind of thing be implemented. I know it would take a lot of work, no doubt about that. Because there's probably hundreds of different options you can probably pick for certain cars. But there's a lot out there where it's basically just body style and engine you can choose from. And I just think it'd be cool to have, like, you know, a fully upgraded, you know, like, diesel, uh, a fast estate. I think that'd be pretty cool. But regardless, the Porsche there wiped the floor with the rest of the competition. As you can see, we're comfortably ahead well this time in terms of lap time. And, yeah, nearly six seconds ahead of race time overall. So, uh, yeah, we've done pretty well with the Porsche there. Um, and as you can see, a few of them had some penalties as well, no doubt, because of going wide on the track. Also, there was two seconds, which... Yeah, knocked them down quite a, um, a, f a couple of places there. They would have been in, what was it, um, 7th maybe? So yeah, they've got knocked down to 8th. So yeah, shame on them. But regardless, uh, thank you for watching. We'll continue this championship with the next two races in the next episode. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.